Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan Sitani, and I'm your host. Joining me today, a very special guest. He's an incredible comedian, actor, producer, writer, and loving husband. As a comedian, he's appeared on Conan, The Late Late Show, Comedy Central, as well as open for Julio Iglesias. He's an actor, and he's been on Two Broke Girls, Modern Family, and more. He's been on big podcasts like Adam Carolla, Your Mom's House, Birdcast, and has his own podcast, Jews Control the Media, and full release and as a husband he was able to propose with only four spotify interruptions before the song played and proposed everybody please welcome mo mandel thank you very much wow you've done your research man i'm very impressed <laughs> this is already like the highest level uh pre-production i've seen in any podcast in history <laughs> oh man well it there was a lot to cover about you you are a prolific poly if i must say myself and you've been huh having dabbling in so many different things. And I think it's so cool that I feel that as a comedian, you're flexing multiple muscles when you're on stage, before you're even on stage, the writing. And as a comedian, you're a great writer. And, and um, Thank I watched- Thank you very much. Oh yeah, and I watched, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the name of your special now. But, it makes uh, such an impact that you have no <laughs> idea what it's called. You're like, I know it involves setups and punchlines. That was negative good. reinforcement. There we got it. All right. Woo, yeah. Woo, woo. I remember you were been, wearing could have been that could have been dicey. Oh my god. Like skanks oh. for the memories. Was that was that you? <laughs> was you? Oh man. And you were wearing a badass leather jacket too. Yeah. During the whole thing. And I was kind of jealous because I was like, damn, I was I told you before we started, I was envious of the curls and the badass leather jacket. I've never been able to pull one. So off. funny is like that is a seven hundred dollar jacket. Like it is legit. And I don't buy expensive shit. Like this is a free shirt I got somewhere. Everything I have. <laughs> Sorry, I got somebody called me here. Everything I have is uh, is free, and yet that jacket I balled out on, you know? Did I lose you? Are oh. you still there? No, oh, no, there I'm here. I'm here. Okay, I'm just sorry. in awe of the yeah, jacket. Yeah, so that, that jacket was crazy expensive, but in the actual, like, special, I made, like, a joke about it being, like, fake to sort of, like, I don't know, it was, like, because usually I am wearing a fake jacket, so that bit required me to say that. And yeah. so I got clowned on it all the time, like, from different comments, and I'm like, no, this is actually real. This is... This is like the most expensive thing I own outside of my oh. Honda. Oh my God. Well, hey, amazing special, amazing jacket Thank and you. the amazing talent around it. I was just talking about the writing that you are able to implement and, and use in your comedy and stand up, as well as writing, being a writer on other multiple projects. Also, you were an actor and have appeared in some of the things that I mentioned in the intro um a producer as well i think you helped produce i was theo doing Vaughn's a lot of pilot. stuff i was the head writer of theo vaughn's pilot and then i created that show comedy knockout on true tv i don't know if you ever saw that yeah that this that, is all this is all before covid decimated uh the planet and my ability to have a career you know along oh, with everybody else oh no Oh man. But, I mean, it's but, so weird though. It's like, I talked to him mean, my wife's a doctor. So her friends are like, what does he do at home now? <laughs> like he can't, <laughs> they all, everybody asks, they're all asking like, cause he doesn't even get like he, what does he do? And she's like, I don't know. He's busy. He's always doing <laughs> shit. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's busy. Oh man. And I will say, I know that you have started one of the babies that you've helped birth in this pandemic was that was a weird way to phrase it, but Jews control like the it. media. The, yeah, uh, Jews control the media, a podcast uh, that's not just for Jews, for everybody, but it is inspired by the little anti-Semitic wave that we hit this summer with Nick Cannon and all this kind of shit. And just me as a Jew and, and a friend of mine is another Jewish comic named Jake Silverman just being like, you know, they keep saying Jews control the media. Blah, blah, blah. It's like we just want to fucking take that, take that back embrace it and just basically give a big comedic fuck you to all these just like rabid anti-Semitic fuckers out there who feel like it's totally okay to spread these crazy conspiracy theories and shit. And, you know, yeah. for the most part it devolves into us just being two fucking Jewish dudes who are comedians, just talking shit and having fun. But um, it can get dicey. We, we've, we've had some fucking haters who have found us on YouTube. You, you can go to Jews control the media podcast on YouTube, put the podcast in. Cause if you don't, you're going to go through a whole QAnon rabbit hole 
that is very much <laughs> not our podcast. <laughs> and I was going to say too, if it's, I'm glad you gave context about what the podcast is about and who you yeah. and Jake are, because if it's just plug in Jews control the media podcast, there might be some sort of, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how many, or... I wonder how many people we have like, you know, I, I was thinking we're probably going to lose listeners because they'll see that and they'll be like, I don't want to listen to that. But I actually think what it's more is we gain listeners who then go, oh, wait, this is not the Juice Control Media podcast <laughs> I was looking for. <laughs> this is ironic and sarcastic. This, I was looking for the real deal, you know, fact-based Juice Control Media. <laughs> yeah. uh, brilliant marketing. And I think you had said on one of the podcast episodes too that YouTube, if you put it, the Juice Control the Media in your titles, they'll take it down. Because they're yeah. thinking the algorithm is just pulling it and saying, oh, this is hate speech out. So there's been challenges there, it's, which is kind of crazy. interesting, yeah, because it's also interesting to see what comments they pull and what comments they don't, you know? Because we had a guy uh, who had commented into our podcast and he said – he had just said to his friend, like uh, in a in a YouTube comment, like, "Oh, look at you know, I'm going to get Chinese food for uh, Christmas, crazy Jew." There's something like that, and they like took it down. But then we'll have people just dropping K bombs on us, which is like the Jewish N word, oh, and they're just like going hard in the paint. And like some of those comments that stay up there, which is like you know kind of shocking and a little disconcerting, I guess. Yeah, it's insane. I remember one of the episodes you were showing that one, and then there was another one that was like don't trust anybody that doesn't celebrate Christmas. Yeah. Just like all this ridiculous comments and they're up there that nobody's, they haven't gone to Facebook jail or whatever yeah. happens when you. I, I have go, started going through and muting them. Cause it was just getting depressing. Like I knew uh, I would get some of that shit, but it's just like hard to like, you know, you, I think the podcast, honestly, I think it's really good. Like we put a lot of effort in, we have clips, you know, video, like I'm really proud of it comedically. And then I go look at it, and it's just depressing. And it's just like, I hope you burn in hell. <laughs> You're just like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. I'm, I'm used to people hate, like, you know, if you want to trash my comedy, fine. That comes with it. But it's kind of like, ugh. You know, so I started oh. muting some of them. But um, the, listen to this. This is crazy. So you've gotten hatred online. We all have comedians. We always get that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think what we got on this podcast last week is the best example of, of someone going from hating you to loving you that I've ever seen before. So this guy starts out. He just trashes us in his first comment, like you fucking, you know, the F word, you know, not the fuck yeah. one, but like, like trash us. And then like, he goes, you fucking suck. And then he does another comment, like the next day, like, you know, I just so sick of Jews and doing this. So he goes from us to like general Jews, right? So he's kind of dissipating a little bit of the anger. Then he, the third yeah. one is like, you know, I just wish you'd tell the truth. And then the, that was the third one. Now the fourth one is like, look, you guys are fucking funny, you know, but... <laughs> And then by the fifth one, it was like, this show is going to be huge. I just wish you'd tell the truth and shit, but I want to come on. And I'm just like, wow, you believe in our show all of a sudden more than I do. And you started out <laughs> hating us. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. We have an episode that's coming up where we break it down. We have all of them up on screen. And it's it's really amazing because like the guy's having like a, a, a bit like a crisis of identity, like while he's commenting on our podcast. <laughs> That is absolutely incredible. And I do yeah. have to say too, it's, I mean, definitely no hate in my heart, but you got, I love the podcast. I love why you decided to create it. And it made me sad when I was watching the episode where you guys were talking about all the haters that came in from your guys' video about the Louis Farrakhan. Farrakhan, I yeah. So, yeah, so I, you I, didn't even know who that was, right? No, Probably. I had no idea who that was. I no. know. It's so funny. Like it's, it's, and that's what like people would say. And I don't mean this in any kind of like shitty way, but it's like, that's what yeah. we would say. Like when white, white privilege, when we don't know certain things. That's like non-Jewish privilege that you don't have to know who Louis Farrakhan is. Cause as a <laughs> Jew growing up, I knew who that was immediately because he was just like people that my parents would talk about. It was like, you know, guy who's saying Jews are the devil, you know? So we just, we knew yeah. about that. And like, of course there's privileges on all sides. We all don't know about each other's shit, but, um, Jake didn't really know much about Farrakhan. And so mm -hmm. I don't think he had any idea what was going to happen. We put up this video where just we remixed him saying, Satanic Jews, Satanic Jews, over and over and over. <laughs> His <laughs> followers did not appreciate it <laughs> at all. That thing had 41 thumbs down in two hours. <laughs> that, I, I saw you guys uh, going through it and you were like, it has 198 views, 41 thumbs down, and then two thumbs up and there was it was just like 
I hate you guys, blah, 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 blah. And then oh, I forgot, it was her like name Ari was, Shapiro. No, was like, Abby Shapiro would be like, great video, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's depressing, man, but it is, it's what it oh. is, you know, it's what it is. Well, I'm glad you guys are doing it because I feel like it is a really well put together podcast. Exactly like you said, you guys talk about these types of things. You guys are also hilarious. And I feel like you guys have a great chemistry and great Thank banter. You, and I don't know where this podcast studio is, but it is incredible. It's like the creme de la creme for vo- video. Yeah. And I will not podcast. be revealing the location based on the Please, amount of yes. hatred that we're getting. <laughs> that, is, that is like, you know, those 80s spy movies where they go in the elevator and it just go- keeps going down. Like that's where this podcast studio is. It's like way beneath the earth. It's a bunker. Oh my God. It is so cool looking though. Cause you guys have got the screens behind you. You've got your laptop and you're able to share your screen in the corner sometimes where it shows you guys and the rest of the screen. Sometimes it just pulls up the full screen. You've got multiple angles. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a slick, it's a slick, well, we control the media. So, you know, we didn't want to, <laughs> we didn't want to be embarrassed while we're doing it. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> oh man. But I was going to say one more thing about the podcast, but I forgot. So I'll just change the subject. You can just, you if you to... remember it to circle back, we'll just sort of like, it'll be like a callback for this segment. Oh, I love it. I love oh, you know, it. if I could plug one thing, um, yeah. I don't know when this is coming out, but our episode, I just dropped. Today, Sean Patton, the comedian Sean Patton, who's hysterical. Oh, yeah. He's not Jewish, but his girlfriend is. And uh, he, so we were kind of, you know, he was on the podcast and we were kind of interviewing him about like, you know, what it's like to kind of date somebody who's like, you know, asking you to go to Hanukkah and shit when you're a fucking dude from New Orleans who has no idea what that is. And, and then we just kind of, you know, talked about a bunch of crazy shit. He has a great Theo Vaughn story on this episode um, that involves them before either of them were in comedy so if you like uh theo and sean you should check that out for sure oh that's awesome i'll um this episode will probably be out in one or two weeks so if Perfect. that episode comes out before i'll just link to it from the show notes people can just this is all working out this is beautiful this is all working Amazing. out perfectly <laughs> Awesome. And then I also wanted to talk about your other podcast, Full Release, with your wife, Dr. Ashley Winter. Yeah. And um, you guys, she is a male surgeon and urologist. She is a a urologist and a sexual medicine specialist. So she does a lot of, you know, she's a surgeon and a lot of it is on uh, other men's uh, genitalia. Oh, yeah. Like right uh, now, she's probably like just sawing into a guy's dick right now. Oh, no. God. (laughs) <laughs> but it's funny so Power that tools. podcast had this weird thing that happened to it because we've been doing that for three years it's called the full release and it's like love line you know we just talk about sex and medicine questions and it's co- comedy and then samantha b started a podcast this year called full release so it's so annoying now when you co- when you search our podcast on youtube hers comes out like 90 percent of the time because she's oh. got the whatever the people buying up the words and shit but uh, it's so oh, funny because it's even the same font. Like, it's weird. It's definitely it's definitely a little bit like somebody in that team knew about our podcast. It was like, eh, fuck it. Or, eh, just, <laughs> just do it anyway. Yeah, yeah I man. saw when I was researching it on Google, I saw I searched for full release. And then I saw it with Samantha B. And I was like, that doesn't look like Mo Mandel. And then I looked <laughs> and I was like, what the? So I, I did see that you, on Google you, the, as well. you you didn't think that I was Samantha B when you saw the picture. You thought that's not him. No, I was like, oh, he shaved. Okay, right, looks good. Right. <laughs> yeah, different haircut. Different haircut. He's a little <laughs> shorter than I remember. But I was gonna ask what what sparked the idea for you guys to start this podcast? Because and before I let you answer, I just yeah. want to say love the podcast. I also this would be weird to say anything different, but I feel like you and your wife have such good chemistry on that's air. good that's that, good yeah yeah um that it's just it, it makes it fun she's really funny too she is hysterical i mean that's that's the weird thing with with her she's like a surgeon and yet she's also kind of funnier than me i think and like better than me in like social media she has like a big twitter following now like it's kind of annoying but it's uh <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's like she her job is so ridiculous. I mean, she's just sticking her finger up at guys' asses and touching the dicks all day. I mean, it's just crazy. That's what her job is. So, uh-huh. and then I'm telling dick jokes, you know. So we just sort of thought, well, I mean, fuck, you know, this is this, this got to be a podcast, you know. It's, it makes sense. So oh, man. we've been That's... doing it. I mean, we've done 108 episodes of that. 
Damn. Yeah, it's you guys lot. have been doing it since like 2017, 2018. Yeah, we started it like maybe four months into our relationship, which I would not advise, but we did it. So oh, far it's wow. worked out. Yeah. Wow. I was going to say, I wonder, because my wife and I, so we get along really well, but sometimes we'll have those fights where it's like, we want to talk to each other for a day or two. And I was, I wanted to do a podcast with my, with my wife, but I was afraid that maybe we would just get caught off schedule or would just leave a bad taste in our mouth or something. So, well, it's interesting. You said that. like, maybe it's a good thing. Cause if you're not talking for a few days, having to get that episode out makes you have to talk to each other. Kind of like the way like going to bed makes you have to be close to each other when you're arguing. What I'll say, our problem is like, she doesn't do any of the post cause she doesn't, I mean, she's brilliant, so she could learn in a second, but she doesn't know how, and she doesn't have time. So it's sort of like what well, we're cranking about every week. It's sort of a little, I have to watch my like resentment a little bit where I'm like, okay, you're going to look at shoes on the internet, and I got to fucking import the shit and do this and do that and do that. You know? uh, <laughs> Especially because everyone likes her more on the podcast because she's a doctor <laughs> and it's a medical podcast. So it's like, she's getting a lot more out of it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I, had the same feeling because i used to do a podcast with my two brothers but I, they did nothing except be there and they were hilarious but then i tried yeah. to harbor that resentment for like okay well now i gotta edit this and then i gotta you know do the show notes and all that stuff so it seems uh, like there's no work but podcasts are an annoying amount of work because oh. You record it. You got to sync it. Now you got to make, you got to take a little piece for Instagram. Now you got to put fucking yeah. subtitles. Now you got to do that. And it all, is, everything is small. Like all those things are about 15, 20 minutes. But when you add them up, you're like, and I got to reschedule my guests 95 times because they're going to fucking always cancel. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just, it gets exhausting, man. It definitely gets exhausting. Oh man. Preaching to the choir over here. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I, I was going to, what else was I going to say? No, but she does a phenomenal job. Always. She's starting to wear a lot of chiffon dresses now. Yeah. That's right. Every, every outfit, every outfit she wears, I think it's chiffon because it's always, some, <laughs> she, I mean, I've never seen a woman buy as many clothes as my wife. It's insane. I mean, it's all like cheap stuff, but it's like our house is, is like an Amazon warehouse. You know, it's just like things coming all the time. And then she returns them. They're coming, they're going. It's just like, it's nonstop. I mean, we're going to Hawaii for a honeymoon next week, and she's modeled like 87 different, you know, bathing suits. She's going to choose three of them, but it's like she just loves buying stuff. So it's kind of fun on the podcast because uh, I think like a lot of people tune in on YouTube just to see what she's like wearing. That week. <laughs> That's so funny. I, yeah. I, my wife is the same way. And I ended up, I actually, we just watched the Netflix documentary about the minimalists. And huh. so then it was her idea of, babe, maybe we should throw some things away. And I was like, really? You think so? That'd be a great idea. So we, and then I also, I think I just imagined when you were saying that if we do a podcast together, it's a reason to talk. I feel like couple, couples therapy, if there's a therapist, he's like, have you guys tried starting a podcast together? <laughs> I feel like that may be good. I would love to hear a podcast that was a couple and the therapist. And that each week you just literally are privy to their therapy, you know, especially if they have like a really bad relationship, that might be kind of cool. Oh my God. That would be great. I wonder if, if you sign up for therapy, there could be a therapist and he has this document that you sign. I don't NDA or whatever, but then there's yeah. a checkbox. It's like, you are going to be recorded for a podcast. And then I'll bet therapy is so expensive. So I bet people would do it. And, um, so many therapists have podcasts. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Like when we started this yeah. podcast, the the full release, you know, we thought, okay, you're a urologist. How many doctors are going to have a podcast, you know? And then we started looking it up and it's like, oh, like all of them, basically. <laughs> like basically, it doesn't matter what you're doing. There is 7,000 podcasts about that, you know? You actually, yeah, you got to defend your thesis um, on iTunes now. So that's, that's just part of how it works. Your pilot episode is how you get your PhD. Right, right, right. Exactly. Beautiful. God, but uh, no, you guys have had great episodes. I just recently listened to <clears throat> the interview with Ariel Aquinas, the I, adult store, adult star. Yeah. And uh, very interesting episode. She's really funny, but uh, I thought she was great, man. It, it was, I was, I didn't know what to expect because she, um, you know, I looked at some of her porn videos and they're hardcore. I mean, like she's definitely like it's not like Playboy kind of stuff. Like she's she's getting it done. 
And, uh, you know, it's obviously it's, you know, erotic and she's great at what she does. Um, but when she came on and she was just, you know, I don't know what I was going to expect. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect, but she was funny. She was really open. Yeah. She didn't, I guess I, I was thinking she would like kind of put on airs a little bit more or be a little more guarded about, right. you know, defensive about being a porn star, but she was like very open. She told some crazy stories that, I mean, just blew my mind. I don't know if you heard the whole thing, but like one of them was about some guy couldn't get it up on set. So he was like calling his mom to give yes. him a pep talk. I was like, what? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I wonder what that conversation, that should have been a podcast episode right there. I don't there. know, man. My mom says we're not close enough, but that seems too close. Uh, that, that is a little close. Uh, I'm going to call my mom for a birthday today and that will probably not come up. Well, let's but, hope not. Yeah. Be- <laughs> very, very spicy episode. And I think you guys had, had uh, detailed her work as very spicy, but I haven't seen it. Maybe I'll put a link in the show notes so everyone can see. But and you guys, are you still on many vids as well? I thought that yeah. was pretty interesting. Yeah, so many vids is like a OnlyFans kind of site, mostly almost almost exclusively sex workers. But they reached out to us and they're like, you know, we like your podcast. If you want to start posting your videos on many vids as well as YouTube and stuff, we'll shoot them out, you know, put them in a uh, blast them out to all of our three million users. So uh, we've started posting like you know a bunch of them on there, and it's been cool because like we've been getting hit up by a lot of different people who that I'd be interested to you know interview, like someone who's a sex phone operator. You know, like huh. that'd be fascinating to interview, you know. So yeah. So it's been pretty cool, man. And they've done a really they've been really cool about like marketing us to like a whole nother demographic, you know. Which is that's uh awesome. yeah, we've seen our number numbers definitely increase after that, which is cool. Oh, that's awesome. Cause I know you guys were talking about it on that episode where you're like, Yeah, we don't know how it's gonna be. It's good people are looking and they're br- yeah, because you think about videos. if you go to yeah, if you go to a porn thing and you're like oh i was like fucking ass to mouth fucking giant titties this and that and then you're like oh two people talking with their clothes on you know what i mean like, <laughs> yeah. like we're not doing anything sexual we're just doing the podcast so um i don't you know I, I could i was like no one's gonna click on this but apparently some people wanted a little little break after they jerked off oh <laughs> that's amazing uh link in the show notes there as well and I, I was going to ask, I mean, I know you were going to do stand up here in Phoenix and I think things just fell through once the, it see, hopefully we're seeing a small glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel vaccine. Things are going to start to hopefully go back to normal. How you've, you've built up so many cool things with your, with your new podcast, your existing podcast. How do you imagine a shift or or will there be a shift in juggling all these things or are you gonna let anything go once you start being more active in stand-up um no i don't plan to i mean it'll just nice. i think the stand-up just will reinvigorates me to to want to like you know do more marketing and podcasting and everything like that because while that is great in its own right you know the goal is always to like get people to your shows you know and so right. it's been a kind of a shift in a way of thinking you know before it was all about just like marketing but now it's like all right trying to invest just in the podcast as itself because i can't try to drive people to any shows because there are no shows uh although the phoenix show will be uh back in march so i'll be at that club i know how to cancel but it'll be in um i think it's yeah march 4th through 7th I know it's a long way away, but I'll be at House oh. of Comedy March 4th through 7th. Yeah. Oh, nice. Link will be yeah. in the show notes. Look at us. Just bank in those show notes. Damn. You know, it's funny. I was at that club the week of the national lockdown in March. That was the last like club that I headlined before this. And they um Oh damn. Because it's Arizona. Like they did the lockdown and they were like, oh, we're still doing the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like we us. did two more nights. Yeah, two more nights. <laughs> It was wild, man. I was just walking around trying to find fucking Purell. You know, the this is true. The MC during the week got sick midway through. I don't think he ended up having Corona, but it freaked everybody out. So he had to stay home. And oh, no. Another MC, and then he got sick. And it was just like, it really felt like, oh, okay, the world is fucking ending. <laughs> oh, my God. That's insane. I don't think the clubs have closed at all well i think tempe improv and phoenix and stand up live had closed kind of but i think they've all been pretty open throughout this whole thing which is crazy but, it is crazy because i mean yeah like <laughs> it's got to be one of the only cities that has been like that that it's just not closed down at all you know yeah 
You'd yeah. think that Arizona would have gone Republican based on that statistic, but somehow it did <laughs> yeah. not. That, yeah, you would think that would be a harbinger for uh, you know becoming a red state. But yeah, I guess not. A bunch of fucking I, wild liberals out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a bunch of mass hating liberals over here. I guess yeah, just, I knew they uh, were somewhere. How it, how it goes? A unique breed over here in Phoenix. God. Uh, well. I wanted to get into some advice, Mo. This has been yeah. great so far. Um, we're going to answer some questions. These are very silly questions that some fans had sent in that are hoping okay. we could answer. Now, before we get into the questions, I usually like to get us all jazzed up and inspired with an inspirational quote. And I like to take this time to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that they cling to and uh, repeat when they having, they're having some dark times or they just need some motivation. Okay. You're, you're, I hate to be that guy who's going to do a bit on a podcast, but you are segueing me into a bit I do on stage. So here is my favorite inspirational quote, right? The key to success is a mystery. The key to failure is trying to please everyone. Good, right? Mm, yeah. You, that's you know good. who said that? Bill Cosby. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so I love saying that to like to the crowds, and then they're kind of like, "Oh, oh." <laughs> <laughs> but oh, nonetheless, a good quote. It is a good quote. Oh man, it's just like taking a shot, just on the inside, <laughs> and then burns all the way down. Right, okay, right. that's good. That's great. So I actually have prob maybe a little better uh, quote than that. The quote was great. The recipient might be the same. It's actually this not a person that produced the quote that I have. It's a robot. And mm. it's called Inspirobot. So its specific purpose in life is to use AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman and just mash them together for an inspirational quote. Hmm. I love it. Yeah. If you ever have any spare time, go to inspirobot.me and it'll just generate a quote on the spot. <laughs> I will definitely do that. I have plenty of time in my hands to do that. <laughs> All right, so we'll try and decipher what this one means. Okay. It's pretty short, succinct. This week, Inspirobot says, drive like you were your cat. Drive like you were your cat. Huh. Hmm. I mean, the only thing I could think of is cats are very uh, fastidious. You know, they clean themselves and they kind of like seemingly are, you know, they're not like dogs or just running around like crazy. Like they're very specific what they're doing so i guess that's sort of maybe drive conservatively i guess lick your tailpipe make sure that lick that's your tailpipe clean. chase uh, um, if you see a mouse drive right after it <laughs> just run over it many times go backwards yeah yeah just sure keep going to like, toy with it don't kill it first drive in front of it then drive behind it yeah i think that's that's that sounds like what a cat would do if it was driving oh that's beautiful yeah i was gonna say i thought it was gonna say fall asleep at the wheel just like cats they fall asleep so yeah i didn't know if inspire about it turned and was trying to kill all of humankind but right. um, i like yeah. yours better they're very no, right they're... though that is eventually inspire about will go the way of like hal you know and uh all the other evil robots and it'll start the best way to celebrate life is to stick a gun in your mouth <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it'll start being an evil inspire robot Oh, God, I know it will turn. But for now, it's uh, semi inspiring yeah. slash confusing. Yeah. So I think I think we you kind of nailed that one. That was great, Mo. Well, thank you. I'm inspired. That's so um, we'll move on to the questions. We've got this okay. first one. It's from Reddit. And it was found by our friend, our friend, our fan. Anne. And it says gagging. I need to ingest caffeine daily for medical reasons. I've been given pills that each have about 200 milligrams of caffeine, which is the equivalent of about four cups of coffee. I have never been able to, in my life, swallow pills. I vomit or choke when I try, and the phobia is so bad that I struggle often eating regular food. How can I ingest these pills? I don't want to chew them because they are so incredibly bitter that they make you sick. I also thought about boofing them up the back end, but I did that with a narcotic and I got sick for several days afterwards. Please, please help. Wow. That's so interesting because my wife can't swallow pills. Oh, and really? She, yeah. And she like, it, she has to, 
and she has to eat something. I don't know. I don't even know how she does it. Actually, every time she wants to take a pill, she has to get like bread or something. So I don't know if she, I don't even know what the fuck she does now. I think about it, but she can't, she just can't do it. It's it's weird to me to be a doctor and you can't fucking swallow a pill. (laughs) You know, you can't even take a vitamin. You know, I, this is horrible of me to say, but I did get, when I was uh, a little kid, maybe I was 12, but I would try and swallow these pills. I, I can't remember if I got hurt or something, but they were on the bigger side and I tried to swallow them and sometimes they'd get stuck and then I'd get them unstuck, but it left this weird feeling in my throat as if it was still there. So then I got scared of, yeah. of doing it. So I don't know. Do, do you, I, what, did you ever get over it? I did. I guess I just stopped taking pills for a while and then started again. And I used to try to do this whole thing where I would lift my head up so that it would just be like a straight yeah. tunnel, like Mario going straight down the tunnel. <laughs> right, but right. I don't know. I, I just stopped being afraid. I guess I really just tried to drive like a cat. And <laughs> I, Well, sometimes you see those giant fucking pills and it is like, this seems like weird. Like this doesn't seem safe, you know? And anytime you're like eating and you do kind of choke for a second, it's terrifying. You know, it's like yeah. so scary. And you're like, oh, fuck, that's right. Like, that's all that separates you from life and death is like this little wow. fucking whatever it is, airway that can that can get blocked, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. I'm that terrifies me that I could die in a restaurant just choking and I'll look like a fool because people know, are like, it's just like the lamest way to die, too. That's the sad part. I do know a guy who, um, who I think his wife like choked to death, like in the middle of the night, she went up to get something to eat or something really tragic and sad. And uh, it's just like, ugh, ugh, it's just like, it's just like sad on every level and horrible, but it's just oh. like, oh my God, it just, yeah, and it happens. It happens to people, you yeah. know, like fucking, we don't even think about it. Especially like, I, I notice that when I eat like steak sometimes, fucking just like love it. I'm just <laughs> chomping it and like, oh God, I really gotta be careful because this stuff is like basically chewing rubber for a little bit there. At least the way I make yeah. steak. No, same. And then uh, what I, I I do the same thing with steak. It's always steak. I maybe I do it really dry, and then I just try and swallow it, and then the, it'll for a second I'll be like, <gasps> and then I'll swallow it. And, then, and you ever see those movies where a- like someone's dying, and then like someone gets a pen and like jam it in here, or like whatever where they do a tracheotomy or whatever it is. Yeah. Like what the fuck is that? They make it look so doable. Like you just jam a pen in there, and then like you create an airway or something. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I forgot what they call like a trach. A, a yeah, trach it's like procedure. a trach. But you see them in a movie, and you're like, oh, okay. And you're like, what the fuck did they just do? <laughs> they stabbed him yeah. that guy in the neck. You know what? There is probably a YouTube video on how to do a trach. So if this person wants to take the pills without trying to swallow, they could just take the shortcut and then just do a little trach, pop that pill in, and then yeah. you're caffeined up. You're I good. think they should just keep shoving everything up their ass, you know, and not just. <laughs> Not just pills. I mean, all foods, you know, like that South Park episode. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I still, one of my favorite episodes. Oh, like, there's classic. no way you pooped out of your mouth. <sighs> oh, God, I forgot they shit out of their mouth. That's right. <laughs> but I didn't know it was called boofing. I didn't either. I never heard of that. Okay. Yeah, it sounds that like was... something the kids are into with, like, alcohol or something that I'm too old uh. to know about that. It's just never I, worth it. Like, I don't know why people do that with drugs. Like, you really got to get high that fast. Yeah, seriously. Just be patient. Do a headspace meditation or something and let yeah. it allow it to take its course. I remember in sixth grade reading about the Mayans and how they, when they would celebrate, they would, to get it faster, just boof that booze. And then, Really? That's what the Mayans were fucking doing back in the day? Back, what do they have to do? Build a fucking another pyramid? Like what was <laughs> what was going on back then? My memory isn't that great. So if you guys are listening and that's wrong, fact check me. But I think it was the Mayans that I, I remember I remember seeing pictures too, where it was like that that Mayan style design, and then it just shows one of the soldiers and he's got the little skirt thing, he lifts it up and puts the booze keg. So that is like <laughs> A scrawled somewhere on a wall in like a pyramid because I've been to those Mayan temples like they have drawings and shit around. That's just like a drawing of a guy just like getting something jammed up his ass. How do they know it wasn't just for fun? How do they know there was booze in there? Oh, that's true. I think because there was a caption that said New Year's twelve fifteen, so that was like the okay. selfie background. But I don't know, man. 
I don't, <laughs> I don't know. People were wild back then, dude. People were just they were just living living crazy down there in the jungles, I guess, you know. It was a it was a real good time. <laughs> oh, seriously. Yeah. I mean God, well, they had that, that sport at the Mayans where they cut people's heads off if they lost. So they were like pretty fucking, uh, <laughs> they weren't squeamish. They, yes, they definitely had a uh, taste for adventure and blood and, yeah. and booze. Um, but they, I remember I was a kid and I saw the movie The Road to El Dorado, where oh, I don't ever think I've ever seen that. These two Spaniards, they're they're little tricksters and charlatans, and they the con men, and they end up being stowaways on Cortez's ship to go to the land of El Dorado. El Dorado exists thanks to Disney Magic and Elton John singing the soundtrack, <laughs> and then they um, they end up hitting it. They end up going there, and I forgot what it. Oh oh, and then they play the game, and then they're like, "What happens if you lose?" Like the losing team dies yeah yeah and uh yeah it's funny like here's that, that harry harry potter they have the game Qu quidditch or quit quick i don't know what oh it's quidditch. quidditch it's kind of like that game basically I, I mean you fly they're flying around on brooms but it is the same sort of thing you're trying to throw a little ball through that little like horizontal you know thing or whatever like the way the the, the thing of it the, the plane area looks um so I, I didn't know they had wizards back then but apparently they did as well you know that's right. And then in the eighth Harry Potter book, they also just chugged beer down their butt. Yeah, so that think... one was wild, man. That was when you're like, J.K. Rowling is a little crazier than we thought. I didn't that's realize a whole how much kind of, Yeah, that's yeah. a different kind of spell. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize how much inspiration she drew from the Mayans and their culture. Yeah, but I know. You really have to of... read between the lines, see where that ass play is, is really leading you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I feel like we nailed that question. So we'll oh, move yeah. on to absolutely. Uh, we nailed it. <laughs> we'll move on to the second one. And last one, this is from Reddit. It's from our fan, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. It says, should I go against my parents' wishes and try to become an NFL player? So it's always been my dream. My parents never let me play throughout high school and I'm a senior now. We don't have football this year anyway, but I'm trying to decide if I should try playing football in college or not. They never let me play because they're scared of injuries and brain damage. I get why they're scared of that happening to me, but at the same time, it's always been my dream. And if I'm not trying to live my dream, what's the point of doing anything? I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm in decent shape and I could get in the best shape I can by starting college in the fall. Thanks for the help. Was this a female or a male? Oh, the so Rebecca sent in the question. I oh, this is a male who's okay. I'm thinking it's a male. It's got okay. Be. Yeah, I don't know, man. What would you say? I mean, I thought about that. Like the statistics are in that football is probably not not the best. Not the best for the old brain, brain health. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would, it would be hard for me to want my kid to do that. Yeah, that's a good question because I just started to think of if I ever have a kid, would I let them play football? My parents, I grew up on the swim team. So that's a good safe. That's a good safe uh, thing. You know, you might cut yourself shaving your legs or something like that. But besides that, you should see these scars. <laughs> I mean, it's just, <laughs> I mean, yeah. And besides the, uh, you know, the ever constant danger of drowning yeah. while you're in the water. You're safe. You're good. And and I think you also, it's just, it's a skill that I feel like everyone should have because it yeah. would suck. Again, if you choke to death in a restaurant, sucky. If you drowned in like eight feet yeah, out right. in the beach, also sucky. Right. How does football play out? I mean, like, what are the odds you're going to like, you like have to save the day by like grabbing something and like hurling it, you know, in a perfect spiral? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like exactly. Kicking them all through like these little fucking posts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I did wrestling in high school and uh, I was not good at it, but that one I always kind of felt like was a good one too, because like you know, if you get in a fight or whatever, you 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 know you could use that, and and that is like helpful to know. Uh, that is a good point. Then again, I don't yes. know if you want to really plan your kid having like a lot of fights in their life. You know, maybe that's not a good way to plan plan out their that, activities. <laughs> that that's fair. That's fair. It is a good. I remember wrestling for one year and I sucked so hard at it and I tried to lose weight to get into a lower weight class. Yeah, and I that's the worst, dude. Oh my God. What were you wrestling at? I was 165 and I got to it. I'm like 200 now. And uh, 
and I was I got down 165. I ch I got the chills, and I ended up getting sick from trying to lose weight because I I had the fan on and no blankets. And then uh, the guy just crushed me. The same thing happened to me. I, I lost. <laughs> I I was a 103 as a freshman, and I had to cut. Holy from, shit! Yeah, I was tiny, man, and I had to cut from 107 to 103 like in one day. And so I got up early. I ran around with the bags, oh. you know, sweat. I did all that, yep. and I got to the match. I think I just got the shit kicked out of me because I was so <laughs> tired. I was like, that wasn't worth it at all, man. Oh man. And I remember the whole time I was like, dad, I don't really want to wrestle. And he was like, you're going to wrestle. You're going to do it. And then he saw me get my ass just destroyed. Like, you're going to be a podcaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm going to get you a microphone for next Christmas. We're going to do a little I don't think podcasts are out yet, but you're going to do it. That's what you're doing. <laughs> Definitely not doing wrestling, but to the NFL thing. I mean, I know it's your dream. Maybe you should try. Are there isn't there like college Quidditch? Couldn't you do something a little safer that's kind of like football? And I if think you, you get like the same it? chicks though when you're when you're playing <laughs> professional Quidditch, you know. I don't know. I mean, like, hopefully for these parents, their kid just sucks at football, you know, and so he gets cut or whatever, because that's the best way to kill a dream, you know, just get cut from go. the team or whatever. There you but, go. I, I mean, mean, he's made it to senior year and he hasn't played football. He's not gonna make the NFL. It's not happening. So There's no way. Yeah. No way. Sorry. Like, so, so there needs a little tough love. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like, you're not gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna make the NFL unless you're like built like a fucking brick shit house and you're like six foot four of pure muscle and you're fast as hell. It, 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 become a dentist. That ship yeah. has sailed. Exactly. Podcaster. Maybe there's, there's become a that. podcaster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. All right. Well, I feel like we've given a, given a lot of really good advice, Mo. Absolutely. So. Yeah. We should charge uh, us. I, that's a good idea. We, uh, but unfortunately, we've reached the end of the podcast, so it's time to say goodbye. But before we do, I just want to say huge thank you. It was a blast having you on. Oh, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate you reaching out. Man. It was a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. And I know that we talked a little bit about what you've got going on, but feel free to plug. Uh, you know, where can people find you? What have you got going on? Um, let yeah, rap. anything. Um, the full release podcast on YouTube. Jews control the media podcast on YouTube. And those are of course, both on uh, all the podcast apps. And then just follow me on Instagram, the real Mo Mandel and comedy awesome. knockout is on HBO max reruns. If you want to watch nice. that. <laughs> I nice. Getting, I don't think I'm getting paid off those, but you know, oh. just watch them. <laughs> <laughs> they are the, yes. Loads of fun. And it's all going to be in the show notes. So you guys Wonderful. can just click, Thank click, you click. Very much, man. Absolutely. Um, well, guys, it's time to say goodbye. We'll talk to you next week. Ciao. See you later.